Hello, this is Dave McClellan, the voice of NHRA. The Matson family has been in the automotive radiator business since the 1950s. Many car enthusiasts recognize Matson's as a leader in the automotive cooling industry. Matson's is proud to have done quality work for specialty shops such as Chip Foos, Chrisman's Cars, Roy Brizio Street Rods, Mole Inc., and SoCal Speed Shop. Articles and advertisements have been featured in Super Chevy, Truckin', Car and Driver, Sport Truck, Street Rotter, and Drive magazines. The original shop, located in Buena Park, California, was started by Jack Matson Sr. and his brother Dale. When the brothers separated their business interests, Jack Sr. started Continental Radiator in Stanton, California. Jack Jr. learned all aspects of the automotive cooling industry and developed a distinct interest in designing custom radiators to cool classic and custom cars and hot rods. Matson's today is still proudly family owned and operated. Matson's offers top of the line custom aluminum radiators, fan shrouds and core supports, all manufactured in the United States. Matson's affiliate, thefanman.com, is an authorized SPAL dealer, offering their customers the finest quality in automotive electric fans with over 20 models ranging from 6.5 to 16 inches in diameter to meet your vehicle's distinct cooling needs. Fan models include straight or skewed blades, pushers or pullers, and vary in CFM. Jack Jr. also designed the Sidewinder fan to fit where other fans can't. Its low profile design and high CFM output is sure to keep your vehicle running cool. Tri-5 Setup and Installation To install the Tri-5 radiator setup, let's first go over the parts included in the setup one core support, two pre-drilled side panels, one bottom panel, two SPAL electric fans, one SPAL 40 amp relay with sensor, one custom radiator cap, one hardware package, one 30 amp circuit breaker with optional second relay, one 13 inch stainless overflow bottle, optional, one quarter inch clear hose, one radiator with AC condenser, optional, one AC relay, optional, one AC manifold, optional, two AC hard lines, optional, one hood skid plate and bottom bracket, 1955 Chevy with air conditioning only, one new engine thermostat, not provided, Contact your local parts house to select the proper thermostat. Step one, before removing your old radiator and the core support from your vehicle, close the hood of the vehicle and look at the spacing between the hood and the fenders on each side. Step two, only for cars with air conditioning, carefully remove the existing AC condenser. Step three, before removing the radiator, carefully remove the radiator cap from the radiator to release any pressure. Make sure that the radiator coolant is not hot before attempting to remove the radiator cap. Disconnect the top and bottom radiator hoses and transmission lines. Then remove the radiator and core support from your vehicle. Step four, Install the new core support. The new core support comes with two side panels, a bottom panel, and two threaded studs. The core support needs to be installed with the two side panels and the bottom panel off of the core support. Coat the threads of the two studs with anti-seize and thread onto the bottom of the core support. To install the new core support, Look for two bolt holes on each vehicle's fender and wheel wells and each side tab of the core support. Slide the two threaded studs into the bottom frame of the vehicle. 
Then insert the two 5 16 coarse thread button head bolts through the core support tabs, the fender, and the wheel well, and secure the button head bolts. After installing the new core support, carefully close the hood of the vehicle and look at the spacing between the hood and the fenders on each side to see whether you need to install shims to ensure that the spacing between the hood and the fender remains the same as the original. The factory may have also installed shims with the original core support. Step 5. Once you get the core support aligned and installed in the vehicle, bolt the side panels to the core support and wheel wells using one quarter inch coarse thread button head bolts. Secure button head bolts to the wheel well with quarter inch coarse thread nylock nuts. The remaining button head bolts mount directly to the core support using the internally threaded rivet nut and do not require nylock nuts. Step 6. Before installing the bottom panel, remove the bottom bolt on each side of the side panel that threads into the core support. Now install the bottom panel using the same bolt and bolt hole on each side, mounting the bottom panel on the grill side of the core support. Step 7. Before installing the radiator, make sure the rubber isolators are threaded into the radiator and fit snugly but do not over tighten. If your vehicle has an automatic transmission and the radiator is ordered with a trans cooler, the transmission line fittings need to be threaded into the trans cooler. The transmission cooler threads are one quarter inch female pipe thread. Next, remove the nuts supplied with the rubber isolators and install the radiator with the isolators going through the side panels. Secure the radiator with washers and nuts to the isolators on the engine side. Do not over tighten. Note, if you have a 1955 Chevy with an air conditioning condenser, replace the hood skid plate and bottom bracket. Step 8. Install the overflow tank. Before installing the overflow tank, first attach the overflow bracket to the overflow bottle using the quarter inch bolts and nylock nuts provided. Remove the nuts and washers that secured the radiator on the engine side of the core support. The overflow bottle will be mounted on the filler neck side. Mount and secure the overflow bracket with washers and nuts to the rubber isolators. First, brush the 1 8 inch male fitting with a small amount of anti-seize and thread the fitting into the filler neck of the radiator. Anti-seize is not needed on the male flare fitting. Slide the stainless steel overflow tube through the rubber grommet near the bottom of the side panel. Then connect the overflow tube to the male flare fitting on the filler neck. Also connect a 1 quarter inch clear hose to the short stainless steel tube at the bottom of the overflow tank and the other end of the hose to the stainless steel overflow tube. A 1 quarter inch clear hose may be attached to the long stainless steel tube at the bottom of the overflow tank and used to drain the antifreeze and water mixture in case the overflow bottle exceeds capacity. If the vehicle has air conditioning, install the AC manifold to the side panel on the passenger side. Connect the two AC lines from the condenser to the manifold. Be sure to use the new rubber O-rings provided. Step 9. Install a new engine thermostat. Before installing a new engine thermostat, Drill three 3 inch holes evenly spaced into the flat side of the thermostat. Drilling the holes allows the antifreeze to reach the bottom of the thermostat and prevents air locks. Step 10. Install the top and bottom radiator hoses. One way to find radiator hoses with the proper bends needed for your vehicle is to take a clothes hanger, straighten it out, bend it to fit from the top radiator hose to the engine, and then cut it to the proper length. The top hose is usually one and one quarter inch or one and one half inch in diameter. 
Repeat the process for the radiator hose from the bottom of the water pump to the bottom of the radiator. The bottom hose is usually one and a half inch, one and three quarter, or two inches in diameter. Step 11. Install the thermal fan switch kit and follow the instructions provided. If the thermal fan switch is installed in the radiator, then the radiator must be grounded for the switch to work. A radiator that has two fans and no shroud will come with a ground wire connected to the bottom of the radiator and needs to be attached to ground. Also install an AC bypass fan relay kit if your vehicle is equipped with air conditioning. Step 12. Before filling the radiator with green antifreeze, bypass the thermal fan switch by attaching an extra wire to the top of the thermal fan switch and the other side to any ground. Then turn on the ignition without starting the car to test the fans and make sure they're running properly. With the fan switch bypassed, let the fans run and start your vehicle. Fill the radiator with 60% green antifreeze and 40% water, leaving the radiator cap off. Let the car engine run long enough for the thermostat to open and close several times. This will eliminate excess air from the system. Once the engine is warm enough for the thermostat to open and close several times, fill the radiator to the top, install the radiator cap, then fill the overflow bottle one quarter of the way full with the antifreeze and water mixture. Disconnect the thermal bypass switch wire. If the vehicle has an AC condenser, turn on the air conditioning and make sure the electric fans automatically turn on when the AC clutch engages. Then turn the air conditioning off and let the car temperature rise to the appropriate thermal switch temperature for your vehicle either 187 or 197 degrees. Now your Tri-5 installation is complete. This is Dave McClellan on behalf of the Matson family, thanking you for your business. For additional information on any products or services, visit www.matsonscustomradiator.com or call 1-866-435-6477 or stop by the Pomona and Long Beach Car Swap Meets. Hi, this is Pee Wee. When I need a radiator, I go to Matson's Custom Radiator. They're the best guys on the block or in the state, or in the country, for the whole 